This is College Board uh, review question, another one that I'm posting for you that I found We're good to look at before the AP exam. The figure above or on our side is on the right show three stages of a dive performed by an athlete. During the dive, the athlete completes several rotations in mid-air while traveling from the platform to the surface of the water. Figure 1 shows the athlete just after jumping off the platform. Figure 2 shows the athlete rotating in mid-air. And figure 3 shows the athlete about to enter the water. Before you watch the videos and explanation, uh, try to watch the videos in the description before you start watching the solution for A and B. And try to answer A and B on your own uh, and then watch my explanation on A and B after you watch the description videos. So for A, in clear coherent paragraph length, the response that may also contain figures and or equations explain why the athlete's angular speed increases between figure one and in two, but decreases between figure two and three. And then the second question is, is the rotational kinetic energy um, K2 rotational of the athlete in figure two greater than, less than, or equal to the kinetic energy of um, uh, in figure one, kinetic energy rotation uh, one, in the athlete in figure one. So, and then they give you a um, few um, choices and you have to choose which one it is. Two is greater, two is less, or two is equal to. And have your explanation. To look at the pictures one more time, I'm gonna scroll them. Um, before I start explaining. So the first one, the person is just jumping, second curled, the person curled, falling down, and the last one, he is straightening up, entering the water. So I want to show you this. You don't have to memorize these formulas, um, but there is angular momentum. Well, any angular momentum, you need to know formula. So linear momentum is mass times the velocity, and angular momentum is you can say, so if there is a rotational motion and here is an object, and this is the distance how far object is from the center of rotation, then to convert your um, linear momentum into angular momentum, you would just multiply by R both sides. So, and for angular momentum, there is a letter L. And um, to rewrite this in other words, angular momentum has formula it's inertia instead of the mass so going back to this formula it's the mass times velocity in angular motion we don't say mass we say it's inertia because mass usually opposes of your um, speed increasing so if you want to in increase the object's speed and you apply some force over a certain time, the momentum of the object is going to change in the linear motion, right? So if you have a box and you apply the force over a certain amount of time, then you're going to ch have a um, change of your uh, linear momentum. So impulse will cause change of the momentum. So the same happens in um, angular momentum. So instead of the mass, instead of the mass, like it was in um, linear momentum, we use inertia. And instead of the velocity, linear velocity, we use angular velocity. So, um, but I has different formulas for different shapes. Let me show you what kind of formulas they have. You don't have to erase any of those. So here are the formulas for different shapes. And um, if you have a disc, and I'm going to post more videos related to, oh, maybe you already watched them before you started watching um, this video. So if you have a disc, that mass is distributed through the disc. Um, then inertia is one half m r squared. But if we have a hoop where all the mass, so they can be the same mass, it can be this mass and this mass, and they have different mass, uh, same masses. Uh, so the hoop mass can be also distributed all around, even though they have the same masses, they have different inertia. So this object will oppose the motion, the rotational motion more than the disc. And if you look right here, um, again, this one has the most opposition of the motion, rotational motion, when you apply torque on it, uh, compared to the solid sphere. 
and even this object has a position but not as much as the other one right so this is probably the smallest one and then so every single object has mm -hmm. different and these are uniform kind of objects where the mass is distributed uniformly through the objects but um some of the objects will not be uniformly distributed like the rock that mass can be in different parts distributed differently so they all will have um different inertia so you don't have to memorize any of the formulas for the inertia but i would just want you to understand um this is the part where most of your questions on ap exam will be related so here is an example that i want to show you so let's say both um discs have the same mass or oh, hoops if have the same mass it doesn't matter which one it is so i have this mass and this mass and uh, the formula for inertia for this one is equal to um, m, it's a disk. So for a disk, it would be one half m. And in this case, you have, I'm going to call this one r, and I'm going to call that one a little r. r squared, and inertia for this one is equal to one half, same mass, but less r. So you can tell that inertia of this object is bigger. And if it was not, so this is for the disc. Um, and when I say disc, that means it's the uh, filled in cylinder with stuff inside. So that is the disc. And if it was a hoop, and the hoop means it's like a ring, all the mass is distributed. Um, around and empty inside so if it was a hoop then your inertia would be equal to m r squared and inertia for a smaller one would be m r little r squared so you still can see that this one is uh, the first one has more inertia inertia means opposing rotational motion so if i apply exactly the same force on both so there is a torque and here is exactly the same torque then the same torque will cause this one have smaller angular velocity than for this one so angular velocity of the first one is going to be smaller than angular velocity of the second one because the second one opposes the motion less than the first one. So coming back to what discussion we had about our momentum. So if I have um, the person that is the mass distributed all along um, this like plank versus this one, you can see that inertia here is smaller compared to inertia over here and also here um, inertia is bigger compared to um, this inertia so but momentum is conserved so i'm going to call um, momentum of the first one is equal to momentum let's do it this way i have momentum of the first picture is equal to momentum of the second picture and equals to momentum to the third picture but in the first one, you have inertia, and your because inertia is bigger when he is all straight, or he is still not rotating and barely rotating, his velocity is smaller. And then when he is curled, his inertia is smaller, so that means he has greater angular velocity. And again, for the third one, he has again a bigger inertia that means he is going to have smaller velocity angular velocity so for um, the first one for a the question says explain why athlete has greater speed why the athlete's angular speed increases between one and two and decreases between two and three it's because the inertia of an object changes it's the smallest inertia in the second picture and two big ones on the first and the third one so velocity is increasing from one to two and then it's dropping from two to three so that would be explanation for this part 
And then for the last part, they ask you about the kinetic energy. So based on this, you will have kinetic energy is of the first one, one half. You have bigger inertia, smaller omega squared. Here you have kinetic energy is equal to uh, of the second one, one half smaller inertia but bigger omega velocity and kinetic for the third one is going to be one half against bigger inertia smaller velocity squared so it's the same as one half mv squared but instead of mass in angular moment in angular motion we use inertia and instead of velocity linear velocity we use angular velocity so for b part you would say that um, this is your answer K2 is greater than K1.